Okay, I'm pleased to be able to tell you a little bit about what we were doing in Chile last month. Uh, was part of a team from New Mexico Tech studying one of the largest volcanic eruptions to have occurred in the last decade anywhere in the world. This was a wonderful opportunity to observe a special type of eruption, we call it a rhyolitic eruption, based upon the chemistry of the rock that's being thrown out of the volcano. And these rhyolitic eruptions are extremely rare. Rhyolitic eruptions have occurred only a couple times in the last century, and many times rhyolitic eruptions are associated with the biggest types of eruptions that have ever been known on Earth. So when Chaiten Volcano in Chile started erupting, and this was May 2nd of this year, we saw this as an awesome opportunity to go down with our instruments and observe a really big eruption occurring. Um, the team was composed of two professors from electrical engineering and myself. We went down to the island of Chiloé in southern Chile to install our instruments. And this was a perfect deployment site because we were far enough away from the volcano to be in a zone that was safe, yet we were close enough to be able to, be able to observe this activity firsthand. Uh, we went down with sensors that were capable of recording volcanic lightning, and we went down with sensors that were also capable of recording earthquakes and sound that's produced by volcanic eruptions. And that was my component of this study. As a geophysicist, I'm very interested in earthquakes being produced by volcanoes and also the sound that's radiated by these volcanoes. So as a team, we went down to Chile with three different types of instruments, electrical sensors, seismometers, and microphones. And we deployed these sensors uh, basically all over the island of Chiloé, which was near to the volcano that was erupting. So the volcano uh, Chaiten which I've talked about before as being a very unique volcanic system because it was a rhyolitic eruption, it started erupting, at least the Chileans noticed that it started erupting on May 2nd. It's interesting to note this is a very remote corner of the world, and the Chileans at first, the local scientists, weren't aware of what the actual volcanic event was. And so they actually thought that perhaps the active volcano was a, was a different volcano lo located not too far away. Well, as soon as the weather cleared, it's a very rainy area, they noticed that the vent was in fact from the volcano Chaiten, which was last er erupting 10,000 years ago. So this is not a volcano that's frequently active, and it, when it is active, it's frequently very explosive. May 2nd, it starts to erupt. We arrived on the scene about two weeks later, May 18th, we install our instruments, and at this point the volcano is still erupting, albeit in somewhat of a diminished capacity. And as we left two weeks after that, on May 29th, the volcano was still erupting in a fashion we call subplinium, which means the column heights, ash, gas, um, rocks are being thrown up about four kilometers above the volcanic vent. Uh, so it's a big eruption still, uh, and the volcano, as far as we know right now, is still erupting and will continue to erupt probably for weeks or months. Our instruments are still in place down at, at this, um, this island in Chile and it's still monitoring the volcano and the plan is to pull out those instruments in August unless of course the activity maintains itself at a very high level.